Hello, good morning everybody, and welcome to the workshop of the teleoperation of humanoid robots. I'm Kourash from IIT, and uh, I have the privilege to organize this workshop with uh, Daniela Pucci from IIT, Serena Ivaldi from INRIA, and A.G. Yoshida from ICE. So, at first I'm going to provide a brief uh, description of the context and the teleoperation, and then I will provide the, the organization of the workshop and the agenda of the today. And finally, also I will provide a brief, uh, a brief presentation of what we are doing at IIT. So considering different scenarios where human now go and act in order to uh, do different, uh, do different uh, actions. For example, in the natural disasters where uh, the environment is dynamic and un un unstructured, or in the uh, Chernobyl disaster where we had the high radioactive radiations, or in future we want to go to Mars and send people to Mars, the people need to communicate also with Earth and uh, in order to live, they need to manipulate their environment. And also the uh, space uh, in ISS, uh, the people need to do the spacewalk and in order to uh, keep maintenance of the ISS. For all these scenarios where they are uh, dangerous for the people and hazardous, uh, why not we, we send the uh, humanoid robots instead of, instead of human? But then for each of these scenarios, there will be different difficulties. For example, the communication delay, the dynamic environment, the manipulation uh, capabilities of the robot, and the different dynamics in the environment. Well, uh, therefore, Either we need a high autonomy for the robots, or we can, in a, another way, we can teleoperate the robot, pro give the cognitive abilities of the human to the robot. Also for the humanoid robot teleoperation, they have, they have also, they should have also the social uh, social abilities. They, they need to interact in an environment, in, in social life with other people. And uh, th therefore, uh, they, they need to be, the, the, the technology should be ready for that. For example, in different scenarios where the human robot is going to um, work in the environment that is made for, for the human, and interacting with different people. Well, for effective manipulation, uh, for effective teleoperation, also we need to have uh, different feedbacks, different interfaces between the human and the robot. What are the commands that the human should send to the robot, and what are the feedbacks that the human receive from the from the robot? So for, for now, there, there are like simple scenarios that uh, maybe we can use the mobile robot, mobile wheeled robot for uh, telepresence, where we have the image feedback and a person with a joystick through a simple interface can control the robot where in future or even now we want to have uh, use more complex robot, humanoid robots in order to uh, teleoperate in the environment. And uh, for different applications, different tasks, we may need different interfaces. For example, in this case, we may need brain-machine interface. But on the other side, the story of the history of teleoperation is quite long. Uh, they have used the, the teleoperation technologies for the, for the fixed-based robots. How are the difficulties in the humanoid robot, uh, teleoperation of the humanoid robot is uh, much more than the fixed space robot. And for fixed space robot, maybe some uh, simpler uh, interfaces uh, uh, could suffice, but uh, for humanoid robot, we need to, uh, if in order to perform uh, complex scenarios, we need to, we need to consider the dynamics, we need to have haptic feedback to the human, 
we need to teleoperate also for the locomotion, where in some cases people use a, a virtualizer or a treadmill. In other cases, we track uh, directly the motions of the leg and, uh, and uh, teleoperate it and map it to the robot's uh, locomotion. In other cases, we may need to have haptic feedback uh, and, uh, and also image feedback. Or, for example, in another scenario for the space uh, teleoperation, we may have high communication delay. So how we are going to resolve this problem if we are going to have, uh, if we are going to teleoperate the robot in these scenarios, it's not, uh, it's not very intuitive and natural for the human in order to do it. So these are some of the difficulties that we, we face uh, for the teleoperation of the humanoid robot. But uh, and what is the teleoperation? Well, uh, um, the objective in the teleoperation, I believe, is uh, to provide some principles to allow natural and effective teleoperation of the robot by the human. Teleoperation is a multidisciplinary field, so we will, have, we, we will need the cognitive science, psychology, engineering, mathematics, and human factors all together in order to effectively provide the, uh, the technology we need for the, the teleoperation of the human robot. Some of the main attributes of the uh, teleoperation, uh, we can count, for example, the level of autonomy we need for the teleoperation, the nature of uh, information exchange, structure of the team, if uh, uh, who's going to make uh, some certain decisions. If the person, the user who's going to teleoperate the robot needs some, uh, needs to adapt himself or learn, or on the other side, uh, uh, the, the, or get trained, or on the other side, the robot can adapt himself to the human. And also the shape of the task where, uh, where Introducing the humanoid robot also it changed the way we perform the task, and therefore it should be taken into account. And but all these attributes also they can be dynamic. It's not necessarily static. They can change by time or task, different levels of autonomy or uh, for team structure or other attributes. But we need also common metrics to analyze different frameworks provided for the teleoperation F in order to share the knowledge and compare our founding together. Um, so teleoperation of the humanoid robot, it consists of three, three different aspects, human, robot, and system. And for each of these, uh, each of these we, we need to have some metrics, for example, at the system level, if the, if the task is going to perform, if it's effective, if it's efficient, and some uh, subjective and quantitative analysis on that. For the human side, we may need to have a high situation awareness, low workload on human. And on the other side, the robot also should have knowledge uh, of the uh, understanding of the himself and also the human who's teleoperating. So, so uh, in this workshop today, we are going to address some of the questions as uh, discussed before. For example, the le level of autonomy we need for the teleoperation, if we really need to predict the human motions or not, and uh, a balance between the maneuverability of the humanoid robot and the robot stability, uh, and how we can map the human motions to the robot motions. Uh, on the other side, we, we are going also to talk about the intuitive uh, interfaces and natural interfaces for the communication of the human and robot. So after this uh, welcome and introduction talk, 
Uh, I will provide a brief uh, description of what we are doing at the uh, ICA facility in IIT, and then Serena will pro uh, provide a brief description of uh, what they're doing at INRIA. Then uh, Yuto uh, Nakanashi from GTI sent us a video. We will uh, present the, the, the video here. After that, uh, we are going to have the Anavatar X Prize uh, to in order uh, to have a talk about the X Prize competition. Later, we will have the poster, uh, poster session, which for today we will have two posters. Later, we are going to have the Enrico Mingo again from IIT and uh, in order to provide uh, their experience in the celebration of the humanoid robot. Uh, we are going to have the uh, uh, Kakuyuchi uh, for the uh, celebration uh, for, uh, and after uh, Joshua uh, for, the, for their talk. After the lunch, we are going to uh, have the Neil Lee and uh, uh, Ramos and Jerry Pratt. And uh, finally, we are going to have Rafael and after that, the uh, panel discussion. So for the lunch, uh, since the time is very limited, uh, we can arrange together to go somewhere close uh, nearby. For example, uh, there is uh, this restaurant uh, close to here. But for the dinner, we were thinking to go for uh, Momofuku. If you, if you like, uh, we can go together and it will be an honor for us. So as uh, Serena also said before, we are going to uh, record the workshop today. And uh, later after the conference, we will uh, provide these uh, videos in, uh, in YouTube, our YouTube channel if you, if you like. And uh, also you can have the updated information about the workshop in the website or on Twitter. And uh, if you have any question during the workshop, it comes to you. Just say uh, you can tell me or Serena. We can uh, ask the speakers at the panel discussion. <coughs> So now I'm going to present a brief uh, description of what we are doing uh, in our lab in IIT. So we, we have the ICAP humanoid robot and uh, we want to teleoperate this humanoid robot and in order to embed the human cognitive abilities in the robot. And uh, we have proposed different, different uh, ways uh, to perform this teleoperation scenarios. Here is a very generic uh, architecture of our uh, proposed framework where we use the virtual reality technology, we use the uh, motion capture system and also joysticks in order to control the robot's hand and also the treadmill in order to, uh, to teleoperate for the locomotion. So here is uh, one of our first experiments we, we did last year uh, where we are going to uh, use the VR technology and we get the information of the human movements from the joysticks and the Oculus headset and also for the walking we use this virtualizer and then we use this information use the robot model in order to map this information for, for the teleoperation of the robot in order to perform uh, different tasks such as manipulation. Then this, uh, this, uh, this uh, framework, it has some limitations. For example, we couldn't uh, control the internal motions of the robot and uh, it means at the configuration level, and uh, also for the teleoperation of the for the locomotion, um, we didn't have enough information. In fact, we only had the information from the head and from the human's hands. So, to overcome these problems, we proposed the, um, we started to use motion capture system. 
where we get the where we get the information of all the human links and then we map it to the robot links only using the robot model and uh, after that we solve the inverse uh, kinematics problem in order to find the uh, joint values and velocities of the robot and uh, in order to teleoperate the robot so in this case we enhance the the scalability of the framework it means uh, we can have different humans or different robots for the teleoperation and it takes maybe less than five minutes to 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 configure for for uh, using our framework for different human or robots and in fact for the human because uh, we only use the rotation and joint angular velocities we uh, we don't we don't need to uh, we don't need to uh, scale actually for the human because it's uh, the also kinematic level so you can see also here for the different uh, human and robot f and with different sizes and uh, uh, configuration and kinematics we use this framework in order to map real time so when we developed that, we said, okay, why not? So, uh, we, we can uh, have this still operation for the uh, whole body retargeting. So here we have uh, the whole body controller, which it, uh, it has uh, uh, based on the task priority framework, the controller, and the first one is related to the stability and uh, the, the rate of change of momentum. And the second one following the uh, configurations, uh, reference configurations, and in this case, even if the human, sometimes it was hard for me even to keep my stability, but uh, for the robot it was uh, easier, I can say, and we could f uh, continue this uh, this scenario for for long time. 